Did you know a typical space rocket at launch produces more than a million pounds of thrust that allows it to carry more than 6,000 pounds of payload at speeds topping 22,000 miles per hour? The energy produced during space launch is so immense that it is safe to call it a controlled explosion. Because of this intensity, the sound produced at liftoff can easily knock down an entire building. There are some rockets present that are way more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine. And here we are with a list of 10 such rockets, so let's get into it. Number 10, Ariane 5ES. The Ariane 5 is about five stories high, which is estimated to be twice the height of the Buckingham Palace. Its maximum payload is about 10 metric tons, that is, 10,000 kilograms in weight. It is the least powerful rocket when compared with the rest, but it can still carry a weight equal to that of an elephant. Number 9. Japan H-2B The Japanese spacecraft have solid fuel strap-ons that let them power off towards the International Space Station. Its first successful launch was in September 2009. Payload to low Earth orbit, or LEO, is 16,500 kilograms. That is the weight of three killer whales into lower Earth orbit. <laughs> We had a liftoff of the H2A launch vehicle number 26 with the Hayabusa 2 and 3 secondary payloads on board from the Tanegashima Space Center at 1.22.04 p.m. on December 3. Number 8. Atlas 5. At the speed of more than 36,000 miles per hour, it would take you just 41 minutes and 42 seconds to go around the Earth's equator in the Atlas V. It would be an aviator's dream, but unfortunately, this rocket is only launching things into space. Its payload capacity is over 20 tons to low Earth orbit, or LEO. The Atlas V can be described as the most reliable rocket as it has a near-perfect launch record of over 75-plus launches since 2002. And the liftoff of the Atlas V and NOAA's GOES-S a highly sophisticated weather-watching eye in the sky to join its twin in providing better forecasts and saving lives. Atlas has begun a pitch and yaw maneuver to steer to its planned path an azimuth of 100.7 degrees. At 35 seconds, the rocket carrying GOES-S will reach Mach 1, traveling faster than the speed of sound. Right on schedule. Signatures look good. Roll program is complete. The speed chamber pressures are rolling off as expected. At 47 seconds after launch, the vehicle will pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q. Max, max, max Q. This is the point when mechanical. Number 7, the Titan 4B. The Titan 4B is the second of the Titan 4 family that launched satellites for the U.S. Air Force. Its original payload capacity of 18,144 kilograms was increased to 21,772 kilograms with the addition of a new lightweight graphite epoxy solid rocket motor called the Hercules Solid Rocket Motor Upgrade. With this 25% increase, the Titan 4B could lift the weight of four and a half elephants. Pitch program is in, roll program is in. We have cleared the tower, and the Cassini spacecraft is on its way to Saturn. T plus 20 seconds. All systems are go. Jupiter Inlet Tracking Station now acquiring data. All systems go. Everything is go at this time, all systems are go.
and the solid rocket boosters have been jettisoned. Item 149 and 5150. Good solid rocket booster separation. First stage Item 152. Number 6, Falcon 9. The SpaceX vehicle first launched successfully in 2010. Standing at a height of 157 feet, which is basically what you get when 30 people form a tower. Built with a simple two-stage design that limits separation events and nine engines on the first stage, the Falcon 9 is the Titanic of the sky that does not sink. The Falcon 9's payload capacity is up to 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. The Falcon soars from its perch toward the International Space Station, carrying Dragon and new science for the one-year crew. seconds into flight, all systems are go for the Falcon 9. Approaching uh, the one minute mark. One minute into flight. Number 5. Proton-M Proton-M, a heavy lift launch vehicle developed in Russia. This launch vehicle, or LV, is an upgraded version of the Proton-K, and it can deliver payloads directly into designated geostationary orbit points. The Proton-M helps in the insertion of satellites which are not equipped with an Apogee propulsion. The LV consists of three stages and can place up to 21 tons into low Earth orbit. We have ignition. And we have liftoff of an ILS proton from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the MRSAT 5 F 2 satellite on board. About 10 seconds after liftoff, the vehicle does do a roll maneuver which aligns the launch vehicle pitch axis with the northeasterly launch azimuth. Now, soon, the vehicle will soon experience maximum dynamic pressure or max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle in atmospheric flight. And for Proton, max Q occurs around 1 minute and 2 seconds after liftoff and at a velocity of about Mach 1.6 and is sometimes accompanied by visible condensation if the atmospheric and lighting conditions are favorable. And here you can see it occurring now. We're just a little, on, little over uh, one minute from launch. And we just went through max Q. Number four, Space Shuttle. NASA's Space Shuttle was the first ever reusable spacecraft designed to carry large payrolls like satellites into the geostationary orbit and bring them back for repairs. The first Space Shuttle mission, STS-1, was launched on April 12, 1981. The main engines provide the Space Shuttle with a thrust that accelerates it from 4,828 km per hour to 27,358 km per hour in just six minutes to reach orbit. Start, two, one, boost ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond.
Number three, Delta Four Heavy. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff at dawn, the dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. On number three, we have Delta Four Heavy a heavy lift launch vehicle which is the world's second highest capacity rocket in operation. It is manufactured by United Launch Alliance and was first launched in 2004. The Delta IV Heavy can lift 28,370 kilograms or 62,540 pounds to low Earth orbit and 13,810 kilograms or 30,440 pounds to geostationary transfer orbit. Number two, Falcon Heavy. On number two, we have the Falcon Heavy, which is the world's most powerful operational rocket by a factor of two. It has the ability to lift nearly 64 metric tons into the orbit. Falcon Heavy can lift more than twice the payload of the next closest operational vehicle, the Delta IV Heavy, at one third the cost. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Supersonic. Side boosters are now throttling back up to full Vehicle power. Has reached maximum dynamic pressure. We're past max Q, the period of maximum loads on the vehicle. Next up, we'll be waiting for the side boosters to begin to throttle down prior to booster engine cutoff and separation two and a half minutes into flight. GNC trajectory looks good on the Falcon Heavy. Reports show that the M1D engine performance is nominal. Exact engine sales begun. Side boosters have begun to throttle down in preparation for the upcoming shutdown in 20 seconds. Major event coming up Second with side booster down. shutdown and separation. And so shut down. Side boosters. Vehicle. Center. 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 Successful separation. We're coming up on Nico and shutdown. Stay safe. Good 
that from start up. Number one, Saturn V. Number one, it is Saturn V, an American human-rated super heavy lift launch vehicle used by NASA between 1967 and 1973. The Saturn V was a rocket NASA built to send people to the moon. The Saturn V rocket was 111 meters, or 363 feet tall, about the height of a 36-story tall building, and 18 meters, or 60 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. The rocket generated 34.5 million newtons, or 7.6 million pounds of thrust at launch, creating more power than 85 Hoover dams. Two minutes and 32 seconds later, as scheduled, the first stage burned out and separated, having consumed four and a half million pounds of fuel. The separation and second stage ignition were also recorded by cameras carried on board the vehicle, 40 miles above the Earth. The camera gave engineers a close-up look at another event, the separation of the interstage structure. This was critically important because clearances were extremely small between the structure and the engines. Those were the most powerful rockets of the past and the present. But the next generation of space rockets like the SLS and BFR are going to be so much more powerful that they'll be capable of launching humans not just to the moon, but all the way to Mars making us a truly interplanetary species. In this race to Mars, who do you think will be the first? Is it going to be NASA's SLS or Elon Musk's BFR? Let us know in the comments section below.